Celebrating four years of talk like you've never heard it before, this is GabNet, the Great American Broadcast Network. Uh, this is the part where I sing. Hey everybody, here I am. I'm Alex Bennett and it's going to be the ramble now from now until uh, uh, midnight Eastern Daylight Time. So thanks for joining us. Well, we actually uh, have a guest tonight. Uh, let me uh, let me turn the camera on to him so you can see his face and see who he is. This, ladies and gentlemen, is a legendary buddy love. Please don't stand people. It's not necessary. It's not necessary, right? Yeah, how, how are you? How you doing? It's great to be here in New York with you. Yes, uh, the, he is. Uh, he is coming. He, you're staying at our. I'm staying here at uh, uh, the Hotel Bennett. Yeah, Hotel yeah, Bennett. Hotel it, Bennett. Wow, what a pad too! I love this joint. Yeah, we just had a great meal, uh, and um, and it's just great to be here with you. We used to be together in, in San Francisco for many years. Yes, uh, we were talking about this tonight and you really launched the buddy love show 30 years ago this february this past february we came on your show in, in san francisco um and did the act on the radio show yeah i mean we brought it in we were singing playing music live broadcast and that evening it the thing took well, off that was uh, prior to that time I knew you as Bubaloo Vickers. Bubaloo Vickers, yeah. Which is not actually your real name either. No, no. <laughs> none of them are. <laughs> how did you, first I'm of confused. all, first of all, how'd you get the name Bubaloo? Bubaloo was given to me by Roger Clark, uh, a little Roger in the Goosebumps. Dick Bright and Roger worked together in this show yeah. in San Francisco. Oh, God. Must be 40 years ago. Um, at any rate, uh, Roger Clark had me come on as the bad white soul man and i came on and did um one song in the intruders medley do you remember the intruders vaguely, uh, Phil vaguely. philadelphia international gamble and huff act yeah. uh, uh and the guy always sang a little sharp uh, he was always sliding into the note but never quite hitting it but uh anyway i sang um me tarzan you jane in that show and and uh and at that point, Roger dubbed me as Bubba Lou. From there, I worked with Dick Bright and then worked through... Dick the, Bright, by the way, was a, we should say... Band leader. A, a band leader in San Francisco. Yeah, and a good pal. Uh, a good one. Uh, I, we used to use him all the time on our on our shows. Before uh, before you moved to the Bud, the Bud Street. Yeah, then we went to the Buddy Love Orchestra, which was really yeah. uh, phenomenal. Just phenomenal. Yeah. Great band. Yeah. Still doing it in San Francisco. So if you're uh, out in yeah. San Francisco, look for the fabulous Buddy let, Love. Let's talk about this, though. Right. Yeah. Um, you were telling me at, at, after dinner that business hasn't been great, and you gave a good reason for it. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, and and it, I, it resonated with me because when I was a kid, my father was a violinist. He used to play with all the band. He used to play actually basically with Eddie Fitzpatrick's orchestra at the St. Francis Hotel. He had also played with Ernie Heckscher and at all the, the other yeah. all the other bands in town. But where he finally wound up and where he was, I guess, uh, uh, a permanent fixture yeah. was with, with the Eddie Fitzpatrick Orchestra. And then during the summer, we would go to the Mapes Hotel or the Riverside in Reno. Or one year he, we were playing the he was playing the Coconut Grove in L.A. Wow! You Whoa! Know. And Those so during and, and we oh, and many times he would wind up with the band or some band at Cal Neva, Cal Neva. and we would spend Sinatra's the, joint for a minute. We we would spend the whole summer up there, and they had these Tough. cabins. Oh yeah, there, and they would put us up in one of these cabins. So for a kid, that was great. But here's the thing: he was a violinist. And all of a sudden, about 1951, 1952... No strings. It, Who needs it strings? Went, it went to combos. Yeah. It went to, like, you know, four-men like groups. Jazz trio, quartet, yeah, whatever. Yeah. And that does not... Never includes violins. No. Unless you're a violinist to try to start I, a combo. I saw Dionne Warwick at a place uh, called Blindstrom's in uh, Dorchester, uh, Boston area. Yeah. Yeah. And um, Blindstrom's was, like, what the Fairmont Hotel would have been, um, I'm trying to think. The Carlisle's not a, a good um, 
for New York because it's a small room, but the Coconut Grove, for Coconut instance. Grove, yeah. And if Sammy came into town and played the Coconut Grove, he would use a six-horn configuration, two trumpets, trombone, alto, tenor, barry, saxophone, and very rarely strings. But if, if they yeah. had room on stage, they would put a string section up. Uh, Fairmont Hotel would do the same thing. Strings became the last thing you hired. Yep. You know, that if, if Sinatra, when he went out uh, on the road to, say, Australia, sometimes he'd just take Red Norvo with him. Yeah. And, and, and a small combo. If you can imagine Sinatra playing with a small combo, yeah. but it was very effective. It was all the Nelson Riddle arrangements and everything, but, and it worked. It, but, a, but it put good, my father out of work. Yeah. Well, yeah. a good song is a good song. That's really, I mean, when you come right down to it, with the yeah. repertoire that Sinatra chose to do, he had such a, a good ear for a great song. And yeah. he had such a, a wonderful way of telling a story in a But song. it was amazing that he could play with the combo, or basically what was a combo, I think it was something like six, seven pieces. Yeah. No, that was it, right? He could play with them and sing with them and be just as good as he was. Absolutely. As being at Carnegie Hall with the big Nelson with, Riddle arrangements and, you know. Or the Count uh, Basie band. The at whole Sands, orchestra. Whatever. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. No. He, uh, but what happened was that put my father out of work, was, yeah. was, was, were the combos. Yeah, and, uh, you know, in movies, they started going to jazzier scores and things like that. All right. Now you're telling me the story tonight that the reason you're having problems working is because for weddings, which you would do. Yeah, it, under my own name, yeah. Get closer to the mic. Yeah, so un, under my own name, yes. Yeah. A buddy love did a couple of weddings. One was at the Cal Neva, as a matter of fact, yeah. for a, a good friend who had to have the buddy love trio up there. But um, local, um, and local cover bands that are out there uh, in San Francisco, there's about four or five of them, and they're all you know, run by the same guy, um, they get some work, but it's very, very tight, you know, as far as the repertoire they play. They're not wedding bands per se, but the wedding a, bands... A wedding it, band would be a band that would... Could play go, everything. And we went and played very danceable stuff. It's danceable, but for every age group that's there. Yeah. Today, young people hire DJs. Yeah. And this is, I, I mean, I... It's one worked, guy with a turntable. No, not even a turntable. They come in with a, 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 not a desktop, but a laptop computer, open it up, and if you really want to get fancy, they've got the little things to, you know, they make it make sound a wookie, like you're wookie, scratching. Wookie, yeah. But you're not. You're using this little disc, um, and they get a ton of work. The other, uh, if there are groups that are out there working a lot, um in San Francisco, there's like a handful of them, and, and they're cover bands, and they're very specific to an, an age group. Uh, if you're, you know, like 45, 55, getting remarried or married for the first time, you're hiring Tainted Love because they do everything from the 80s. There's now a group called Mustache Harbor that does like anything from Steely Dan, yeah. Air Supply, you know, sort of this mid range. Uh, you know, pretty crappy songs, but yeah. <laughs> Stilly, Dan, Stilly Dan being the exception of that, Love Will Keep Us Together, um, you know, Beach Boys stuff that's later on in their career, not the, you know, let's go surfing now yeah. era. Um, but, you know, that's, it's called yacht music. Yeah. But that's what's going on. And, uh, but... So my that, point that's the that's the problem with the music yeah. business now. Well, there is no music business uh, the way hey, that you I and got I news know. for you. There's no radio anymore. No, I know. I you know. know? I mean, but the radio that I knew doesn't exist anymore. No. No, it doesn't. And uh, you know, I I listened to what you were doing before uh, you know, was uh, after after you left terrestrial radio you were doing serious radio and i would listen to you out out in the west coast yeah because really early in the morning if i was out driving around i could turn on and listen to you uh serious radio uh has one problem and that is dropout you could be driving around in a city if you got a tall building yeah all of a sudden 
the signal's gone. Well, I here, can't tell you how many times you, I've been you, listening you, to a talk radio show and getting frustrated I, by missing I was thinking of writing an article or something on the big lie of satellite radio. Yeah. Uh, the, uh, there are a lot of lies about satellite radio. One of them is that it's satellite radio. The fact is that in a city like New York, you can't get a satellite, a decent satellite signal. Without so relays. You know, so you know what there are here? Are what are called repeaters. They're yeah. not satellite repeaters, but they're repeaters that play into those radios just like any broadcasting right. station. So you're not getting the digital schmidgital signal. You're not, you know, when you get out into into Iowa, yeah, you can get the you're getting the the Sirius satellite radio. But I I was I went I had a Sirius satellite radio in my car years ago that I rented and I was going through the redwoods and I couldn't get it because of all the trees. The trees were blocking the signal. Yeah. So the big lie is that this satellite, this idea, in fact, the idea of satellite radio is now, it's wonderful. what, 20 years old? It's, it's out of date already. Yeah. They, and who, needs, who needs the satellites when you've got the internet and in your car, you're capable of picking up all those internet stations? Yeah. You know. It's, it's, uh, but it's true. What, what's terrible about that is I now share my audience with about 10,000 other people that are doing the same. Who are trying thing. to command ears. Yeah. And uh, I don't know if I'm attuned to the audience who listens to the internet, okay? Because I'm older, and I talk about older yeah. stuff. And, yeah. you know, so uh, I have decided, uh, and I, I very honestly say to myself, I'm an anachronism, you know? And maybe you have to say the same thing when it comes to well, music. Well, no, know? I yes, yes and no. Uh, the, the, the cool thing about the character I created is he's still relevant as he ever was because he he's he's campy yeah well there's it, campiness it, yeah. and there's also a, a certain um historical um reference point that you can take him through and you can grow old with yeah um because he's when he was hippest hip hep cat ever he was still out of date i mean he's that's the joke yeah he's instead of going to aspen He's still going to Palm Springs, you know. <laughs> but still, still, you know, where before you could you, you could go back and forth. You could do the Buddy Love show right. somewhere, and people would you'd probably do that in a club because right. uh, it's an act, okay. But then all of a sudden, somebody would say, "I need you for a wedding," and you would then send out basically the yeah, but I can Bubaloo say, Vickers group. No, 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 know, Bobby you know. Vickers group, but. I can keep that current. I mean, I can keep, no, I can put Lady Gaga in, and I have no, a young girl fine. singer. That's, and that's fine. But what I'm saying is, if these people can hire themselves a DJ, yeah. you, you know, you you have no way of competing against that. Here's the, here's the deal. Unless you want to work for the same price, you as the have DJ. to get in front of the millennials that are booking the stuff. Yeah. Uh, whenever I can get a millennial audience to come see the Buddy Love show. I own right. them the same way I owned them back in 30 years ago when I was playing to the same age group. Yeah. 25 to 35, there are certain funny bones you yeah. can hit yeah. and there's certain reference points that you can always reach them with. Yeah, You're right. And that's that's the Buddy Love show. And that's what has kept that thing yeah. Um going yeah. and perpetuating but, but as i'm saying but it's harder today band well to it's get to harder it. because there's no place to play yeah there's no clubs i mean in san francisco there's a handful of clubs where back in the day you had the paradise lounge you had the dna you had the oa i mean you had 30 clubs that you could play at right we had the paradise lounge we owned that place for 13 years and you were you were instrumental in getting us on the map. You and Ben Fong Tories were the yeah. only people that paid any attention to us early on, until we went to New York, and then everybody jumped on the bandwagon. Um, but yeah. basically, music is. I mean, if you and I went on and listened to Kiss and out of L.A. or the the big pop radio station out of new york yeah and just or the sirius went to any of those and uh, channel two on sirius it plays nothing but the hits we'd listen and we would not be able to hear an actual instrument being played yeah. anywhere on the track you'd hear a drum machine you'd hear synthesizers you don't even hear a guitar 
I mean, even when Prince was recording everything by himself with no band, you'd hear his guitar playing and you'd hear him playing a bass and he'd even play drums from time to time. Not, not these guys that are creating these tracks now, the big producers. Um, it's, it's all, all done. All electronic. It's all electronic music. And we don't, you know. So don't what, what happens to, let, let, let's forget about you and your play. No, I, mean, your I could play. talk about Paul McCartney. No, for crying no, out but about. I mean, let's talk about the guys that are, were the studio musicians in Hollywood. I know many of them. Have they got problems? No, well, Dean Parks, I know quite well, uh, still works pretty much every day doing three or four sessions some days, mm -hmm. some days not. Um, Gary Novak is a studio drummer. He still gets work, but it's mostly commercial or um, symphonic stuff. But you had a bunch of guys in Hollywood a few years ago called The Wrecking Crew. The Wrecking Crew. Uh, they yeah. got everything. Tommy Tedesco. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Gary, uh, all those guys would work. By the uh, way, in case you're interested, folks, it's there's a great, a great documentary yeah. on The Wrecking Crew. And you would Phenomenal. be surprised uh, how many different people they played behind. Everybody, oh, they played on all the Monkees records. They played on all of Neil Diamond stuff. They played on all the Beach Boys stuff. I could they, go. They even I could did spend Frank an hour. Sinatra. Oh, they well, yeah, certainly. Hal Blaine played on a yeah. lot of Sinatra stuff. As did Glenn Campbell. Glenn Campbell was one of the Wrecking Crew. Yep. No, it was an incredible group of musicians. But I will go back to this because I was talking to you uh, earlier about some of the greatest songs ever written. Yeah. Now, I was just li looking through my iPhone because I knew we were going to talk about this. And, uh, you know, the list. If you were to put together a set of the greatest songs ever written. Mm -hmm. uh, I would, God, I would. Well, something in the way she moves would be in there. Uh Gloria of all things would Van probably Morrison. a Van Morrison song or um, Have I Told You Lately That I Love You is a, a wonderful song. I don't See, know if you I haven't put in the named any 10. standards, which I would. I would, I would say uh, um, some of the Sinatra, you know, classics. Any of the the uh, um, first for instance, one. I think a song like uh, well, I, to begin with, I'm a nut. I'm nuts for anything by Cole Porter. Yeah, oh, cool. but, anything. Uh, the way you look tonight is the, to me one of the most beautiful songs ever written with one of the nicest changes in it. And it, it has a wonderful bridge. That That's the thing that I, I as a singer, yeah. I look for songs that take you from point A to point B yeah. and lots of places in between. Yeah, My number one song as a singer, and I've got a lot of songwriters that are dear friends of mine that agree with you not only agree with me have said it to me before i even brought it in up. other words if you if you said to them what's the greatest he, they would name this particular yeah. song alfie by bert Bacharach. why alfie well because that's never it's never i can't say i don't like the song but it's never been one of my favorites you know well i'll tell you why it's one of my top is range wise you have a place where you can go low to high without killing yourself yeah. if you pick the right key. Right. Number one, on a musical level, mm -hmm. it has one of the greatest B sections ever when, mm -hmm. you, when you put together the lyric and the melody. Yeah. What do you mean by B section? Well, let me point it out. You've got the opening. What's it all about? Alfie, is it just... For the moment we live, what's it all about when you sort it out, Alfie? Are we meant to take more than we give? You hear that lyric? Yeah. What's it all about, Alfie? Is it just for the moment we live? That's a powerful statement to open with. Yeah, but what's, hold on, let me finish. What's it all about when you sort it out, Alfie? Are we meant to take more than we give? Or are we meant to be kind? And if only fools are kind, Alfie, then I guess it's wise to be cruel. And if life belongs only to the strong, Alfie, what will you make on an old golden rule? 
Oh my God, that's a lyric. It's Bacharach. As, and it? here, yeah, that's Bacharach and Hal David. And Hal David did the lyrics. That's what it is. Those two two verses that I just did. Yeah, are the A section back to back, and the B section. It's not. It's really a bridge. As sure as I believe, there's a heaven above our feet. I know there's something much more, something more than non-believers can believe in. I believe in love. Our fee without true love, we just exist. Our fee until you find a love you've missed. You're nothing. I fee when you walk. Let your heart lead the way, and you'll find love any day. I fee. Uh, I know why you like that song. Why? Because it allows you to vocalize. No. It allows you to vocalize with a lyric that is so powerful and so well crafted. As sure as I believe there's a heaven above, I know there's something much more, something even non believers can believe in. I believe in love, Alfie, because this is about a guy who's a cad. He looks at love as a conquest. It's not this linear thing that where you two people come together and mm -hmm. and and join this bond. It's it's taking advantage of whatever it takes to get to that promised land in the guy's brain, and it's really not what he's looking yeah, for. I, you he's know, lost it, his yeah, way. He yeah. can't find true love because he's stuck in the conquest and not in what... And, and you well, relate I think, this to today. I think it's a beautiful example of somebody writing a song for a movie that's about the movie, about the message of the movie. Well, yeah, but it's really a, a life message. But, when, you know, when I think of, of, of songs that would be on my list, I mean, I always talk about Cole Porter. A lot. The way you look tonight is incredible. The way you song. look tonight is is just a gorgeous, gorgeous song. And uh, you know, I'll tell you what my what my favorites is, uh, Leon Russell's. Uh, um, oh, uh, what song? My mind's a blank now. Um, I I think I know. You know what I'm talking. Karen Carpenter did it. Uh, it's been Rita Coolidge did it. He did it. Yeah. Uh, yeah, starts this out is the piano a, song for, a song for you. Song for you. Yeah, yeah. That to Great me song. is a song that every time I hear it, I go, "One of the most beautiful songs ever written." But it probably takes you to a place emotionally. Not. That... I don't know that it does. I just love the melody line. The no. fact that it's not. It's unlike any other song. You no, know? it's a, melody wise, it's a very interesting. And it takes you from point A to point B in a, a great way. I've been so many places in my life and time. Yeah. We've well, sung a lot of songs. It's a great a lyric. Bad it's a great lyric. When my life is over, da -da 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 -da, I want to, I'm singing yeah. the song for you. Yeah. You know? Uh, another great song Roberta Flack covered. Uh, um, not the, the one. Uh, da da dee da da da. Ba 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 ba. Let's face it. Yeah, there's a lot, a lot of great, great songs. Great songs, but for me, that one has an incredible. And yet, I've never heard you sing it in a set. I don't sing it a lot. I sing it up. Why, know, why, if it's not if it's that great, don't you do it like every time you're on stage? I, well, first of all, I need an arrangement for it, and, uh -huh. and Tom Scott has a, has. A, said you should have an arrangement for it and he's going to write me one so i will start doing it um in the buddy love show i i have a certain amount of room for ballads in a show and that's where i do yeah, it you can't get too sentimental with the character can you uh no i can and you i can. do i i uh, there's one song that i do but well, I let said me explain it. something to the audience who don't know who you are yeah is that he has a character he plays called buddy love 
Buddy Love is your consummate lounge singer. Yeah. He's, uh, he's a little more complicated than just being a lounge singer because his, his background it, is, he, is sketchy. He, well, I often felt, uh, this is my interpretation yeah. of the Buddy Love character, that he lives a delusion. Yeah, he's a delusional character, without a doubt. Yeah, he lives in a, in a world that doesn't exist anymore. No. And not only that, it never did exist for him, but he believes it does. And when he sings, he gets you sucked in. He he yeah. caps. He he sucks. But do you, you ever get people in. who do, have people who don't get what you're doing? Because a lot of times this character talks about well, when I was working with Sammy at the Sands and blah blah blah. No, blah, when blah. I wrote a song for Frank Sinatra. When you wrote a song for Frank Sinatra. When I was Sinatra, six years old, in and, the back and people of are going. I never heard of this guy. He wrote a song for Frank Sinatra. No, that's the joke is yeah. that he wrote a song for Frank Sinatra. But, I often felt that if I were to play your character, I would play him entirely delusional as though it was a crazy man no. on stage thinking he was something other than he was. Well, that's that's the way I play it. But you, you And you've seen the act enough to yeah. know that I, I throw bombs very early on to get them to capture their imagination and attention. In other words, I, I, second song, and we're doing "Whole Lot of Love" by my dear friend, yeah, Mr. Led Zeppelin. <laughs> I, it, you know, and if they're not with you at that point, if they haven't figured out that you're nuts, yeah. by that point, you know, then you throw the Sinatra medley at them. Uh, the the unfortunate them. part about it is, though, audiences are thick. You know, well, some are, and here's the cool thing about doing the Buddy Love Show because I've done yeah. it for years and yeah. I still enjoy it. Yeah. And yes, we still have these same kind of issues, but when the light bulb goes on, yeah, and you can look in a you know intimate room and in an intimate setting, and you're watching people all of a sudden come into your world, whether they're buying into it or they're being duped. It doesn't matter. You've got them. And that's what's fun about doing the yeah. show. Well, I always loved the Buddy Love Show. Yeah. I always thought it was... I you, well, you were a great supporter. Yeah. You were. Yeah. And you still are. Um, yeah, yeah, sure. I, I have nothing to offer any longer. Oh. I used to be a big shot. That's my new slogan. <laughs> well, mine is, do you have any idea who I think I am? <laughs> 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 uh, yeah, I better get to some calls here. Yeah. Uh, I don't know how we're going to do this. I think maybe if you just want to sit there, listen, oh, and I jump won't. in whenever you want to, and then I'll just poke, turn on the camera sure, uh, so that they can see you talking. Absolutely. Um, I'd, uh, love to, I'd love to see, see who's on. Yeah. Uh, let me see some, here. Some might be from San Francisco and remember let, the show. Come over here a second. Okay. Let me just see what happens if you come over here. Let me, let me, let me switch to this camera here. Um, there we are. We're both yeah, wait a minute, let me switch to this camera here. There we go. Yeah, yeah you there. could you could jump in and, sure. and say stuff, and we can then we don't have. To, uh, or uh, uh, yeah, well, you know, you don't need to use that mic. You, okay. This this, this mic. Will this will pick us both up. This will okay. pick you up enough, cool. or I'll 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 take Boost. care of it. Anyway, Hi, let folks. let me turn on the. Uh, I can't wait to see who's out there. Well, you know, uh, uh, Phil, you better call because he mentioned you at dinner. He said, what about that crazy left winger? Oh, right left winger. Left wing, or right winger, rather. <laughs> you can move a little more okay. over this is way. This, uh, there we go. No, this guy's, what's his name again? His um, name is Phil. 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 Hey, Phil. Yeah, I, I like Phil. You know, Phil, uh, Phil, Phil is the man you love to hate. Anyway, <laughs> I have the phone lines are open, and, and he's just going to be here chatting with the rest of you just like we normally do. Yeah. Uh, but I, I wanted you to hear him this evening because... Uh, yeah, it was pretty. Uh, it, was, it was a fun discussion about music. Anyway, um, our number. Uh, see, we have to wait now because it takes time for them to call. Right. It also takes time for them to know that we're taking calls. We are. All right, which we are, folks. So you you can uh, simply give us a call and we'll talk with you. Yeah. Uh, I, and uh, Tom Yamaguchi from from. Uh, He's out there in the East Bay of, 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 of the San Francisco oh Bay Area. Oh, my goodness. Area. Hey there, Tom Aru. Oh, hello. I was just putting I was just my, oops, have I not muted it? No, not muted didn't. what? My, uh, my, uh, my browser. Uh, you, I don't know. We can see you. We can hear you. Yeah. 
So okay, you're, great. you're fine. There's Phil. And there's Phil. Hey. Yeah, yeah. He was talking about you at dinner. Look, look at the microphone he's got. Look at that. Yeah, this guy. And he's look, the picture. My God, what yeah. kind of camera is that, Phil? No, it's just a camera like this. You like this? Oh, yeah. Do we look this good? Yeah, absolutely. What kind of camera are you using? You're using Logitech, right? Logitech nine twenty or something. Yeah, the, the yeah. mic is good. What kind of mic is that? It's a Rode Broadcaster. Beautiful. Do you do voiceover work too, Phil? No, no. no. Okay. Uh, I'm just... a I'm in the carpet business. Really? The... Yeah. Now is wool carpet as bad as, you, uh, or should I go to a synthetic? <laughs> I, you and... know, these are questions I need to know, Alex. Yeah. A well, synthetic, like a you a know, nobody on this program, master? nobody on this program, buddy, has ever asked him about Phil, carpet. About carpet. <laughs> I'm asking him right now. Buddy, I'll tell you this. Uh, if you had a Rolls Royce, you wouldn't put a vinyl interior in it. No, maybe. And you'd put a uh, you'd put uh, wool carpet. You'd put leather. Right. And it's it's the same thing. Uh, wool is a very small portion of what's sold today, but it's a uh, a beautiful natural uh, fiber. And if you can afford it, uh, I say get it. Okay, good. Thank you. I, th I agree with you, and I was talked into a stain master, and I'm not pleased by yeah. it, by gosh, by golly. Uh, okay. Well, let's let's. Stain master is just the stuff they spray on it to keep the stains yeah. uh, uh, away. Yeah. And uh, it's you know like bug spray, except you spray. You it had on. to start him. <laughs> <laughs> you had to get him going on carpet. <laughs> this is Gabby. Yeah, We're gabbing. Yeah, Alex and I, you know, I saw you think you're trying to think of a song and 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 so forth, and everybody was drawing a blank. Uh, what's your What's your favorite song of all time? What do you think is the greatest song ever written? Oh, and I'll yeah. think in terms, Phil, of, of of songs that really take you on a journey. Uh, probably the uh, Beatles. Uh, 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 what's What's uh, the? Uh, it, it, it's a very soft melody. Uh, one of their earlier ones. Uh, Here, there, and everywhere. That's oh, a great song. Uh, That's a wonderful, wonderful song. song. Something. Yeah. Let, let, me, let me ask you something. I say, something well, who do you? Who, I have a, a list of what I consider the three greatest lyricists of the twenty of the of the, tw of the twentieth century. Yeah. Okay. Who would three greatest? Okay. Okay. I'm Here we go. Ready? Okay. Yep. Cole Porter, mm -hmm. John Lennon, mm -hmm. and Chuck Berry. Chuck Berry hey, would, would would be you would get a huge agreement from guess who? who? Alex Bob, Dylan. Yeah. Bob Dylan. Bob Dylan. Bob uh, Dylan called Smokey Robinson, and um, your favorite, but right Norwegian there. Wood. Norwegian Wood. Yeah. I once met a gal, and shall I say she once had me. Had me. Yeah. Let's see a little more of your face, Jeff. You got it like... Hey, Jeff. There we go. Hello, hello. Yeah, because he's How's got that? such a great he, beard. Why he should does, we only see him on his face? The guy's a, a yeah. regular movie star. But anyway, star. no, I always felt that Chuck Berry was one of the greatest... <laughs> one of the greatest lyricists of the 20th century. I mean, his lyrics were... Um, uh, there was a song he did uh, called uh, Little... Oh, what was the name of it? I can't remember now, but it says... The line in it is... In, in one of the other takes of it was, she must be bad, she must be good because bad things don't draw crowds. Oh, that's you know, a lyric. I mean, that's a lyric. You know, but and, that's a fun and, and lyric. it would also create terms to fit a lyric. Like instead of refrigerator, it wouldn't work in that song, so he used the term coolerator. Coolerator, yeah. You know, so. <laughs> it was, no, the best. One of the best. Yeah, uh, I, I would uh, I would concur. Come a little closer to the mic. Come a little bit closer. Yeah. There we go. Is that better? Yeah, yeah. There we go. Yeah. So uh, anyway, he hello to uh, Tommy Amaguchi. He's from the San Francisco Bay Area. I know area. Tom. Have, have you ever been to a Buddy Love show? I have. I've been to Buddy Love shows at uh, Breakfast of Bennett. Okay. Uh, in the studio, and probably the most. Uh, unusual place in a supermarket. Oh my God! The, uh, these are all Alex Bennett appearances. Those are all. You've Alex never Bennett. been to what? Like you've never paid to see the Buddy Love Show. No, I'm a cheapskate. Okay. <laughs> you really, you hurt me, Tom. I want to tell you that I won't hide my pain. <laughs> okay. But uh, do you remember the Andronicos show you? Oh, did? absolutely, over in Berkeley. Yeah. Yeah. yeah well, that's where I live. 
Well, yeah. we, we did do a show at Andromeda. Yeah, Coast, and Buddy we? Love was your house band. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We, yeah. we were, we Same were, stuff. we were out there for you. Yeah. Um, <laughs> anyway, we need more callers, by the way, yeah. tonight, folks. What are you waiting for, people? Christmas, Hanukkah, pa- Passover. Passover is coming, coming up. Easter, no less. Are you going somewhere for Passover, uh, Phil? Uh, no. Uh, are you going somewhere for Passover, uh, Jeff? Home. With a whole bunch of people. Oh, really? really? You're having a Seder. I sure am. Oh, good. And actually, we're actually going to have somebody coming who nobody else even knows them. It's kind of a secret person. So Ooh. that's interesting. Interesting. Oh, nobody we would know. I mean, it's not important to no, us. No, no, no. Not no. Elijah. Huh? No. Elijah. Not Elijah. Hey, Very all right. good. Oh, good joke. Good. good joke. I love it. Uh, are you, you're not Jewish, right? No, I'm I'm goy. But I'm you're a, going to a seder. I'm going to a seder. My wife is Jewish. That's why he's in New York. He's coming married, going to a seder. I married a nice Jewish doctor. My mother would be proud. Girlfriend has com, has has complained to me that for the entire time we've known each other, we've never been invited to a seder. You're what? kidding. Yeah. Let's invite her. And then I said to her after she complains about this, I say to her, "Do you want to go to a seder?" And she says, "Not really." Okay, then the yeah. <laughs> Because in case people don't know, seders are a very special form of Jewish torture. <laughs> That's true. In which they promise you food for like an hour and a half or two hours, oh. and, and occasionally they'll throw a glam shank at you. Yeah, a glam shank or a, a scallion that you're supposed to beat yourself with. Or you're you supposed to dip a half an egg in, in salt water. Yeah, uh, or, or or you get to take a bite of Hiroshi's, which I don't even know what that bitters, stuff bitters, is. Bitters, yeah, yeah. and and then and, you get and, to drink Manischewitz wine. Going, Will you give me some kind of fucking sustenance here? Yeah, you know, yeah, no. and yeah. no, you have to suffer like the Jews suffered when they left the uh, yeah, Israel please. when they left. The oh, Egypt. and you finally get to eat some uh, matzah, which is not even wheat. Well, no, you don't get to eat the matzah before Elijah does because no. you leave the matzah out or you hide the matzah. Yeah, hide you the hide, the matzah. The matzah. hide the matzah. Matzah. Yeah. Elijah gets the wine that evaporates. Yeah. Yeah, well, some, and it's really sh- you, shitty you, wine you, too. It's like Manischewitz or Mogan you, David. Yeah, but, you, but, you, but I always knew it was my un- I always knew it was my uncle Shmuley who went over and had a sip of it, so we'd think Elijah had been there. Yeah. Well, he, he's from the Bay Area. He knows good wine. You know? <laughs> there you go. The Midwest. He would think that's that's the catch me now, up. Now, for instance, you have a seder, right, Jeff? How long yes. is your seder? Oh, short. Well, short. <laughs> I once went to my friend Mort, uh, and I love Mort. I'm so bad that you he's. Know, we've never he's, seen your uh, wife, by the oh, way. She heard that Buddy Love was on. Am I on? Yes. yes. Oh, yeah. Yeah. You saw me once. I went on once for Jeff's birthday. Right. So anyway, Mort is dead. So I mean, he died. That's what. But I'll tell you what. That's what it means. <laughs> this is really why. His hagada was one inch thick. It was a hard. It went book. on for hours. But we have a coloring book hagada. Yeah, that's yeah. Okay. we used it from when Andy, was, our son, was what five. Yeah, that's. And, it, that's and then the we approach. wanted to upgrade, and the whole family revolted. No, oh, we want the coloring books. <laughs> so the I, coloring keep, books. I keep yelling. It's like five minutes max. Hagada eat. Yeah. Hagada eat. eat. I know. Right, twenty five minutes with the time we start your well, eating. I, my business manager Gary every year holds, uh, or I don't know if he still does because I've been out there in quite he has a few years. He's a seder, and you've never he, been he, invited he, to his. No, seder? I always was invited to his seder, and it was this. It was like it was called. I we used to call it Gary Seder City. You know, it's Seder's like City. he invited like fifty people, and he would make this table that was big enough to hold the fifty people. And he uh, hired people to come in and serve stuff and so on. But he would go through every inch of that Haggadah. It was hours before we ate. Oh, you got to you know. eat before you eat when you go to one of those seders. Yeah, <laughs> right. That's what the Lutheran girl does. Either that or if you can, if you can, it would be nice if you had some kind of inf- I- I- intravenous uh, sustenance going on, you know? <laughs> I'm with you. Oh. Now, do you Catholics out there, is Easter the same day this year now? Yeah. Next following Sunday. Sunday. It's it's this coming Sunday is Easter. Yeah. Right? right. And and is when's Passover? 
Friday and Saturday. Friday and Saturday. Saturday. Friday and Saturday. So they're not they're not After on top of, they're not on top of each other this year. Okay. No. Well, just remember, Passover is really supposed to be a whole week. Yeah. yeah. Well, it starts. Yeah. You mean we can't eat for a whole week? <laughs> you can't eat any um, flour right. yeah. or something. And along. and Friday is good. <laughs> the goy you know, talk. Wait, wait, wait a minute. Friday is Good Friday. Right. So yeah. and actually, about. actually, the Good Friday meal was supposed to be a Passover Seder, wasn't it? Well, they, they it, what it was was it was in fact the 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 Last Supper was a. Uh, uh, was it on a Friday? What, what, well, it was it was I don't know if it was on it was a Friday, Christmas. but the Last oh, Supper Passover. was a Passover yeah. meal. Yeah. You know. Yeah, the the Last Supper would have had to be before the Friday, right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> How yeah, did right. we get so religious? Boy, what are we doing here? Hey, <laughs> hey, we could use some more callers. Where are you? It's been slow this week for some reason. I don't, I don't know why. Everybody's on vacation. I, They're going to a Seda. I guess everybody was too busy watching the Roseanne <laughs> show last night or something. You know? I missed that one, but I did uh, too. I watched it. I packed. And I saw it on Hulu. Uh -huh. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it was. Uh, so, it, it wasn't. Look, it it wasn't terrible. It got. Are you ready? At what they describe as astronomical numbers, eighteen point one wow. million people watched the second of the two episodes. Hey, the first episode they got seventeen million. Alex, this show does that on a Monday. Uh, there are very few shows in television that get those kind of numbers. Now, whether she can maintain that. I don't know. Yeah, we'll see. Uh, I, I, there, and there was some, there was some decent writing in it. And I, John Goodman, you know, is good in anything that he does. He could yeah. be in the shittiest movie, and if John Goodman's in it, at least there's some kind of dignity that's added to the show. He's wonderful. Did he, didn't he lose weight a while ago, and has he kept it off? It doesn't look like it. No. I was saying that to myself. I don't think he's, he's as heavy as he isn't I've as heavy him. as he was. Yeah. Yeah. You know. But he's he's heavy again. I think what happened was I think he lost too much weight, and there was a certain perception of John Goodman and why you want John Goodman, uh, yeah. because he has you know um, um, that look, huh? That look. <laughs> he's got yeah. that look. Yeah. yeah, and and so if he lost too much weight, he might lose his John Goodman trademark. Gotcha. Yeah. So, you know, like I, you know, who I feel bad for. I don't know if any of you watch This Is An Us. Actress, uh, this is that actress that lost 100 pounds. What's her name? Uh, she played uh, Molly. And no, Dance Mom lost 100 pounds. She went to jail and she lost 100 pounds. Uh, oh. anyway, anyway, good good idea. Let's go to jail. We'll lose some weight, right? I think it's ill-advised, but... Uh, <laughs> and, and, like, and, super the position. And, no, wait a minute. No, at our, if I went to prison now, okay... Yeah. Nobody would want to butt fuck, fuck me. Come on. Nobody would uh, want me well, to be his bitch. Inmates. Huh? There's older inmates that are yeah. doing life yeah. that, you know. Yeah, they, but they're like you and me. They can't get it up anymore. So, you know, forget it. <laughs> <laughs> yes. He <laughs> says, no, wait a minute. It's not me. Jeff. If you ever want to go to prison, the best way would have been to go to prison in Connecticut 100 years ago. Why? Why? Why Connecticut? Years? Are you from the East? Yeah, he's good. he's yeah. in Connecticut. Oh, he yeah. is in Connecticut. Yeah. Okay. They, there was a special law that you're only allowed to give a prisoner only five lobsters a week. But only that was five? considered uh, bad food at that time. <laughs> <laughs> well, especially if you why, eat, well, why if you're you, eating kosher, it's definitely well, if, off the menu. It, well, if, if, <laughs> the, reason, the reason why kosher is off the menu is because lobster can go bad. It's a bottom feeder, and yeah. you could, they had a thing called red tide disease, yeah. and people could die from the the kosher laws weren't like some strict God came down and said don't eat ham. You didn't eat ham because chances are you could get trichinosis from it. Well, yeah, that's you before know. they knew how to cook it. So, but these, yeah, but these were dietary these are antiquated rules. Antiquated rules. And, well, that right. in this day and age, I, I don't think if you ate what they call traif, non-kosher food, uh, you would be uh, in in uh, hurting well, I'll, your. I'll be eating non-kosher food starting Friday. Yeah, uh, <laughs> yeah. 
it's uh, <laughs> it, it's not just that. It was the uh, wooden plates that they had, no. and they used to not mix the milk and the meat. Uh, the milk so and dairy, the, can, uh, dairy yeah. and, and dairy meat and can't meat be can't on work. the same plate. Yeah. I, excuse right. me. Plus, uh, let me come wouldn't... back. I will be eating kosher starting Friday. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right. So uh, what happened was, uh, I guess the Jews didn't get the Black Plague, and that might have been caused uh, uh, partially by the mixture of the, uh, the milk and the meat and the wooden plates. How do you know we didn't get the Black Plague? Well, because they would kill us for not getting the Black Plague, thinking we were witches, uh, since uh, <laughs> we didn't eat on those plates. Right. Uh, yeah. I don't think Jews got the Black Plague during uh, the, um, the good years, actually, in Spain. Hey, let me put out a little plea here. More of you people, don't embarrass me. Usually we get like, you know, eight, nine people no, here. I, I, but he's no. here. I want to impress him with all <laughs> you people. So start calling us. Renee, where are you this evening? You out there? That counts as two. Where's the guy from Dubai? Yeah. <laughs> well, I think he said he was coming to the United States where he was on the road or going to go traveling or something. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. But that would be Hawaii and Dubai, and uh, one night we had uh, Hawaii, Dubai, and Berlin. Yeah. All, uh, or is it Germ Germ Berlin? Is he in Germany? In Berlin, Max? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so uh, it's an international show. Yeah. Uh, so, I mean, uh, all I'm saying is is that uh, uh, there's no, no uh, uh, coincidence that Passover comes at the same time as Easter because the... The well, last this supper. year it does, but yeah, it's not but, that way every year. Well, nobody said that oh, the well, Last Supper, learning. you know, ever appeared on, you know, uh, on Friday. Uh, yeah. okay. Does Good Friday celebrate the Last Supper? I suppose it does, actually. Yeah. Vernon Nunn has joined us. Vernon, Vernon, pleasure to have you with us. Yes, Vernon. Uh, did you? Uh, thank you for sending me that information. I ordered that Bluetooth uh, transmitter, and I'm going to see if it works. If you say there's no delay okay. on it, I, if you say there's no delay on it, I believe you. I'm trusting you, Vernon. That's what I'm using. Yeah. By the way, Vernon has a special talent. Let him hear the special talent. Yes, Vernon, please. Morse code. <laughs> yep. Yep. What did you He's just tell me? Really I John. think I detected a little, a little it, snide it, remark it, towards me, it, it, and it, it, I don't actually, he, No, <laughs> no. What, what I sent was GAB for Great American Broadcasting. Broadcasting. See? All right. Now, is there such a Morse code for the word fuck you? Really? That was yeah. quick. You and if I said that to somebody, da-da-da, da-da-da, right? That, I assume that's it. Right. Yeah. Those are the letters F U. Yeah. Oh, okay. All right. I don't know where I went to college. I went to fuck See? you. It was great. great. Have you ever done that with your Morse code to somebody? Uh, no. But I had a friend well, whose call sign did. was his call sign was K four F U, and I heard him and I heard him on the air one evening, and just to get his attention, I sent F U, and he yeah. said save to you. <laughs> how many let me ask you this question how many people are there that you know that you must know a lot more than i would know but i don't know of many very many people who do morse code anymore is it is it a, is it an art that's it's, going away somewhat uh there's no longer a requirement to pass a morse code test in order to get a ham license like there used to be ah okay uh, uh, frequencies or uh but you get uh, the highest class license, you get uh, some allocations of frequencies where only Morse code can be used and therefore, you know, less crowding and things like that. I, I can see how Morse code was very important at a certain time, especially when we did, uh, you know, communication across the country uh, through wires and so on. And they would use telegraphy to send messages to people and then they would type them out and deliver them. That was kind of mm -hmm. Western Union's way of doing things in the early days. But it, does it have a practical usage today? Or is it just, a, is technology kind of, you know? Technology's I mean, kind of taken over because as uh, at one time, merchant ships and cruise ships and places like that had to have uh, radio telephone operators who knew Morse code for emergencies. But now with satellites and uh, geosynchronous satellites so you know where you're where you are on the globe anytime anywhere 
and uh, satellite communications, that requirement has yeah. gone bye-bye. So, in other words, it's something people kind of do as a pastime. It doesn't... I do it because I enjoy it. And, yeah. you know, sometimes, I, sometimes I that's the only that signal. I enjoy that you enjoy it. Now, Alex, can yeah, we Sometimes add? that's the only signal that can get through. Uh, I've, the farthest contact I've actually made on ham radio was in Tibet. Wow. Mm. Tibet. And that was Morse code, and it was about 10 seconds. Wow. It only took about 10 call. seconds. Wow. I sent his call sign. He repeated back my call sign. I said, thank you. It was some that, kind of stratospheric uh, skip, and then it was over with, yeah. right? Do you have a big amp and a tower? and, and No, you see my equipment right there. That's, there it is. That's it. Yeah. Wow. I love, no, it's nothing. Spe it's nothing fancy. Uh, what do you? Do? I have mostly mostly wire antennas. Uh -huh. uh, I do have Bipoles? what's called. I do have a beam antenna on top of the garage, but that's uh, what they call a tri-bander. It'll operate on three different frequency bands. Mm -hmm. But it's nothing. It's nothing like what you see at some of these guys that have lots of money, you know, oh. and what they call antenna farms. You know, yeah. <laughs> it's. Yeah. I don't have anything like uh, that. I'm in a. Your neighbors. I'm on a, oh no, my neighbors. <laughs> Are cool with it all, except yeah. some of the neighbors who walk by and they stare at these ropes hanging in the trees and pointing and wondering what that is. You know, it's the ropes holding up my my wire antennas. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So. Okay, Alex, help me out. Okay. You've got we got okay and you got somebody's what? Somebody's calling. I want to know where uh, Phil. Where are you oh, from? I where can't. Are you living? Uh, who? I, somebody's uh, trying to call us, but you're calling us on one of the old lines, and you have to call. Uh, Gabnet Live. You have to make it an original call. All right. So well, yeah, I'm I'm in Walnut Creek, and okay. uh, that, in that's a beautiful Bay. vest. Well, thank uh, you. Did you have that made, or did you no, get it at Esper West? This is or? Ralph Lauren Double RL, his Western influenced wow. line, and I collect his stuff. Wow. Did you get it at the Vestibule or Vest for Less? Uh, vest for Less. <laughs> I have a vested interest in this young man. <laughs> All right. Okay. It is beautiful. <laughs> oh, man. So you're yeah. in Walnut Creek. You're in Connecticut. Uh, that's uh, yeah. Jeff. Uh, Jeff. And um, Patrick's in Wisconsin. Okay, Wisconsin. Yeah. All right. And, and, and Vernon, where are you from? I'm in Louisville, Kentucky. Louisville, Kentucky. I have great friends and, there. And, and, and uh, Tom Amaguchi's from the Bay Area. Tom, we He's know over in the East so, Bay. Okay. Berkeley. He, used to, he went to Andronico's to our uh, breakfast with Bennett. You know, I, don't, I hardly remember that. But then again, I knew Phil back in the Bay Area, and I don't remember him. Really? So it's, you know. Uh, all my uh, pictures of me in those years are at my ex-wife's house if she hasn't burned them. But, and so I, I should go get one or two so you can see what I looked like back then. By the yeah. way, if, if you have a, uh, a Roku, yeah. uh, I just put up on... Uh, Gabnet TV, okay, which is a separate channel from uh, Gabnet Live, which is the normal uh, Roku channel. Uh, I put up the worst television show ever made. Which would be? Which is one. Who is calling? Is somebody calling on a line? It's not Phil Myers. It, it, no, but it, it, he, they're calling on an old group call. Right. And that doesn't I work. I want my... Um, uh, what do you call it? What? Uh, iPad. Let me turn it off. Was that, it that the call is trying to come through on my iPad. Yeah, yeah. Weird. Don't do that. You've got to call, not using, uh, uh, calling in on a former group that you were it's on. Be a fresh connection. Huh? It's got to be a fresh connection. It's got to be a fresh connection. Yeah, yeah. Uh, here, here comes James Lee. James Lee is in Hawaii. Woohoo! Yes. Uh, well, let me see here. Let me. Uh, I got to do some adjusting here so we can see. Hello, James. Are you there? Yeah, I copy. Good signal for, uh, out here on the Sandwich Islands. I uh, copy you guys in New York and on the continental U.S. Right. Now, were, were the Hawaiian Islands known as the Sandwich Islands? Mm -hmm. Many years ago. Many years ago. Hey, we do it for the tourists so you guys can come out here and spend your tourist money, man. Come on. Why? Why? See, I, I would have thought the Sandwich Islands were somewhere else. Why was why was it called the Sand? Now Tom is going. No, Alex, it, it was the Sandwich Islands. Okay, well, Tom, yeah. why was it called the Sandwich <laughs> Islands? Before they had Lou. Wait, 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 w
name that the people knew it as. That's why. I see. It, it wasn't named by the Earl of Sandwich. <laughs> or for the Earl of Sandwich. This, uh, Captain, it was Cook, Cook, right? Was it Cook uh, that discovered I think uh, so. Yeah, yeah. It absolutely yeah. was Cook. Actually, it was really the South Sea Islanders who got there many, many thousands of years. Well, before. yes, we know that. But, you know, <laughs> don't you know that most history is white history? Come on. You know, like nobody, they say, who was the, the person who discovered America? Oh, that was Christopher Columbus. No, it wasn't. It was some Indian who came across the Bering Strait and said, what should we call this? You know, I mean, it, but it, it's white history. And if I were an American Indian, I would be so pissed when they say who discovered America. You know, how can you discover something when there are already people there? Yeah. Well, they didn't discover it then. They were there. Yeah. How you doing, Patrick? What's uh, what's up in your neck That's of the Patrick. woods? I am just enjoying life to the fullest. Really? See, this is a guy who, how can I put it? You've got a great attitude about life. I wish I had that same great attitude, but you know me, everything's half empty. You know. <laughs> Look at that smile. My That's bladder funny. is half empty. You know, it's things like that. <laughs> wish mine was. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm feeling your pain, Phil. Well, Phil, Phil, yeah. ha Phil, if, oh, you're going tomorrow to have your uh, bag removed, uh, right? That's right. Yeah. He had uh, a, a prostate, his pop prostate removed. Oh. Uh, no. uh, yeah, yeah. No prostate for Phil any longer. Go to yeah. your room. No prostate for you. Yeah. Well, I, I had a good run. You know. It's, yeah. No, uh, I would. I would. I would kind of feel the same way as long as I didn't become incontinent and my life wasn't affected in any major way medically. Okay. Watch. No more Flomax, off for Mr. Phil. Yeah. Well, no more. No more. No, you no don't need any Max, of that. Yeah. No, no, in yeah, fact, in, in in fact, uh, he's got to stop it from flowing. He has to. Yeah. Really. Yeah. 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 So, yeah. So uh, yeah, uh, yes, now Patrick, who what grabs and stabs as he puts it, uh, who has to use a catheter in order to pee, uh, is the expert on this. So Patrick, you're on, uh, or you're heard, in. What? <laughs> I I heard Phil last night say that he's going to have to do the kego exercises, but he doesn't exercise anyway. Blah blah blah. Just trust me, Phil. It works. Really? And even though. I don't have a lot of muscle control. That's something that I got lucky with, that I was able to learn how to control it. That's why I grab and stab rather than have the I'll back. Bet. Well, uh, maybe they've got a Kegel class at my gym. And <laughs> <laughs> it's, you got step, you got Kegel. Well, wait a minute. Now, yeah. is Kegels, you stand by the counter, that's all. It, 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 how do you do Kegels? You clench your ass or something? Yeah. yeah. Is that it? No. Oh, I do that all the time anyway, so I'm ready. Yeah. My yeah, you're at the supermarket. Yeah. Doesn't help. So that what is that, that that will tighten up the muscles there and then you won't have to pee all the time? Yeah, you can stop the flow so you don't leak. Oh, I see. Okay. Well, that's uh, that's good. It's nice to yeah. know. This is information that we it's too much for us. Really to important stuff. Yeah. <laughs> so you so tomorrow you probably get the catheter taken out. Yes, 11.45, can't wait. <laughs> You're counting the seconds. Yes. Uh, yeah. I'm ready. And, you know, uh, a lot of, maybe there was no damage when they removed the prostate. They're, they're going to tell me what the pathology was and all those other things. Uh, well, I'm sure if it was negative, they would have told you already, you know. Well, uh, not necessarily. It's Kaiser. <laughs> oh, yeah, it's Kaiser, which, of course, as you know, uh, Larry Bowles Brown once referred to as doctor-assisted suicide. Right. <laughs> you guys know the joke about Kaiser to the other. Yeah. Yeah. So this guy, this guy's uh, going in for, you know, to get some sperm extracted for a intra, intravenous, uh, what do they call it, uh, in vitro. In vitro. Uh, so they put him uh, in a room and um, say, okay, uh, We'll, we'll send somebody in, and uh, you know, all of a sudden, this beautiful blonde walks in and, and you know, gives him a blowjob, and he gets the, <laughs> gets the sample, and he's walking down, and this other door opens, and this guy's jerking off, and, and he says, wait a minute, I got this beautiful blonde. Why, why does this poor guy have to jerk off? Oh, Kaiser. 
Oh, boy. Uh, well, yeah. There's also a doctor who said to his patient, I've got good news and i got bad news. And he says, well, what's the bad news? He says, well, uh, you've got cancer. He says, what's the good news? He says, see my nurse? I'm fucking her. <laughs> <laughs> Lots of jokes like well, we that, kid, folks. We kid. So, <laughs> those are the old, the old jokes. Um, so uh, let's see. Anything happening in the news? Uh oh. I don't know. I've been away from it for a day, and I can't. Well, can't Trump say I fired it. the VA secretary. Really, the Veterans Administration yeah. secretary got fired. Why? Yeah. You know, well, I'm beginning to off. believe. As I saw this going on for the last couple of weeks, it's starting to seem like uh, it's uh, it's another episode of The Apprentice. He he's just used to this firing thing. You know, that he's voting people off the off the no. show. I see what's happening is that he's starting to put people in. The original people he put in were there to satisfy everyone that he wasn't going to blow up the world. Then, uh, now yeah. it's a year and Now he's going to go blow up the world so he needs the people to do it with? Is that yeah. what you're well, saying? Certainly the guy so, he picked uh, national security. <laughs> yeah, well, he's at 45% uh, approval rating right now. Yeah. And um, he's putting in people that are going to push his agenda. And uh, I don't think he's doing a wrong thing. I think he's yeah, guess. Guess who his first pick was to take over the VA? Uh, who? Uh, another guy on Fox, a guy named Hedge Seth. You know why? Because he as soon as soon as he gets out from the presidency, yeah. he's going to form uh, uh, the TNN, the Trump News Network. And what he's doing is putting together his entire uh, network staff. staff. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, well, he couldn't the, get that guy approved way, though, uh, because of uh, conflicts. Uh, yeah, he couldn't uh, get him approved because of conflicts. So now yeah. what was he's his put name? up the White House doctor, the White House physician Jackson, Admiral Jackson, oh. is now the guy he's putting up there oh, for VA. Geez. Wait a minute. Yeah. Now hold on a second. Tom had his hand up. Tom, oh, yeah, I'm just going to say that actually uh, he put in a whole bunch of incompetent people, kicking them out, and putting in another bunch of incompetent people. So this 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 Jackson who did his physical, yeah. What what experience does he have running a, a federal agency? You know, just it doesn't make any sense. The one thing is, I'm not surprised because one thing is the uh, the guy he, he, that was there was a holdover from the Obama administration. He was the only left. He was the only one that um, that uh, that Trump uh, hmm. kept in when Obama left. So he was very expendable. Yeah. So that's uh, what it Mr. Lee, uh, out there in Hawaii, uh, do, are, do you guys feel somewhat distant from any of this? I mean, because we could care less. You know, actually, what what we're more concerned about what what goes on in o Naha, Okinawa, what's going on in Australia, New Zealand. I mean, as far as the continental U.S., uh, you folks barely exist, except for Las Vegas. We all love to go to Vegas for our high school reunions. That's the big deal. What, what, why but is mainland, Vegas? He, 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 yeah, but the mainland, you know, it's gambling, you know. You know, there, the was, a, there was an old. Uh, it's, yeah. it's, it's something, you know, we really don't care about, uh, except we send our kids for their education, obviously. One of the uh, best. And, of course, we yeah. love you folks as for dollars. Since you, Without your tourism, we'd be, uh, you know, a third uh, world country, literally. One of the best questions that I ever heard an interviewer ask, and I think it might have been Carson to Sinatra, was, when you're having sex, who do you listen to? Uh, and, 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 and it's kind of like me saying to you, when you go on vacation, where do you go? Because you're in the biggest vacation spot in the world, practically. And you're saying Las Vegas. Yeah, because we like to gamble. Remember, the Asian community here, because uh, the Church of the Latter-day Saints has uh, very strong here. There is zero... Churches can't even have a bingo game going. Now, Jim, they, don't you have like offshore ships? No, negative. Uh, the yeah. Hawaiian homelands people won't let it, let that occur. Yeah. Uh, it, it doesn't occur because remember everything in this state, and you remember, Alex, uh, is about family. Yeah, it's who you know and who your relatives are, mm -hmm. and that's that. That's what counts. It's not ability. It's not a PhD. It's who, what family do you come from? Now, you, you, your, you yourself are not Hawaiian, right? No, You're but right? my wife's from Honolulu. She is from Honolulu. <laughs> uh, uh, how did you wind up in Hawaii? 
Hey, I got tired of the city. The hills of San Francisco, Columbus Avenue. Oh, St. yeah, Peter, they're Paul. so ugly. Like they're so hill. ugly. You know, oh, it's I, just. I lived there over 65 years. It's you just. Know, the, the you know something? Clogs, I got to tell the, you. The, the cable cars with all their goddamn yeah. noise, the uh, uh, the drilling, of uh, digging up those damn cable car tracks, the the Bay Area rapid uh, transit scandals. I got stuck under the tube so many times commuting into Berkeley, you know, uh, and Obviously, as you, we all know, that's the so place. So I'm going to go to places where there are roaches as big as I am. Hey, if I stayed in the Bay Area, I'd have a stroke. I'd be dead by now. Let me tell Most you, I, li- I still live there. American, I mean, he still lives and, there. Uh, Irish American classmates uh, didn't even make it to 70 out of Galileo High in San Francisco. Okay, check this out. I live there now, and it it is as overbuilt as you'll ever yeah. see it. Right now, it's all they can do is go up, and they keep going up, and they're you built. Know, there's, there's, there's like. Eight cra- eight tall cranes. Yep. Do you know there tall used to businesses. be a law in San Francisco yeah. that you couldn't build a building taller Over than ten, tw- ten was, stories? I, think, I thought it was twenty. Yeah, the Rust Building is twenty eight stories. Yeah, that yeah. was a big building in those days. Yeah, yeah. But, but but then it went to ten stories, and what now they're is- now they're letting them go nuts. Well, I mean, so the, all they can do is build up. But what does that do to the skyline of San Francisco and the hills and being able to see the hills? Well, it's got Tom, to what yeah. about it? The the Salesforce Tower. Our, <laughs> yeah. Come on, Actually, I, I I I love it. Yeah, I do too. It's a yeah. very beautiful building. It's yeah. it's an interesting building, and the 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 tower right next to it, where Facebook is putting a thousand people. There's going to be I I I can count five companies that will bring over fifteen thousand jobs to San Francisco in the next eighteen months. Salesforce is bringing in 3,200 people. Facebook is bringing in 1,000 to fill that building that is right next to the Salesforce tower. Lyft is hiring 400 new people. I mean, that's that's just four companies. Uh, every time I talk to somebody, they're hiring. They wouldn't hire who me. Can afford, who can afford to live there? Yeah, but if you're a, C, a senior on a fixed income, you're stuck. You're priced out. Uh, even the widows out in Sunset, no, no. Uh, the uh, Ingleside Terrace area, you know, as, as they pass on, they can't afford those huge property taxes. You had five thousand dollar a year taxes. You had, you had uh, what was it, thirteen? The uh, the property tax Rob, thing. Yeah, the, the city's yeah. pension a liability for the uh, employees is up the yin yang. Tim is you know, Tim. By the way, killed Ed Lee, the mayor. Let me. Let me. Yeah. Let me. <laughs> Ed, let me that yeah. Let He's me. Dead. Yeah, let <laughs> he me time. interject here. The yeah, Tim. Safeway. Tim was trying to say something. Something. And Tim is, doesn't have a camera, so we can't see when he wants to talk. But I heard him try. So go ahead, Tim. I, I used to work with a lady that was on the Bay City Rollers, mm-hmm. roller skating. Mm-hmm. Which she, one? She used to joke. This was uh, Joanne. Oh yeah. No, I was oh. uh, Karen, I think. But I, she used to joke that when she lived in San Francisco, she basically rented a locker at a, at a bus station. And lived out of that locker because she couldn't afford a, even a garage. That's yeah. a good idea. <laughs> oh, look, and, look, okay. You know, don't yeah. worry about the skyscrapers, though. In 10 years, they'll have 4K cameras on one side that'll uh, display what you would see from the other side so that it'll make the buildings invisible in about 10 to 15 years. It probably, wow. probably. You know, you know. remember our old studios down on oh, 8th yeah. Avenue? Yeah. Do you know what that is now? Uh, it's uh, the Twitter building. It's Twitter building. Yeah. Yeah. It used to be the, the Furniture Mart, and right. now it's the Twitter it's building. It's the Twitter building. By the way, we've been joined by Kevin, who is wearing the cap we were using last night. Is that a handy cap? What do you got underneath there? Hair. Hair? Oh, Hair. good. Well, you now, don't I, need the handicap. I, I, then. I, I want you to take a guess when you look at Kevin, what Kevin does for a living on a particular holiday. He plays Santa Claus. You bet your life he does. Wow. There ain't no Santa Claus. Yeah. Do you ever get asked? Let me ask stooges. you this. Do you ever get asked to play Santa Claus like in the middle of the year? Uh, there's actually a, a market for July. Why? <laughs> but I haven't done it. Wow. Now, where's, where's he from? July. It's too goddamn hot. He's in, you're, 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 you're in, uh, uh, he's in the Bay Area. Oh, you're but, in the Bay Area, too. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. They're having Christmas sales earlier and earlier every year. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you know, wow. they start getting hey, wet. November. Uh, you got you got the wrong hat on, Alex. 
Oh, well, uh, hold on a second. Uh, I, bet, well, I, I saw right him there. last night. Yeah, you got the hat, too. You got to get the hat. Oh, you, wow. Here it is. Here Th it those is. are called <laughs> driving caps. And here we go. Yeah. yeah. There we go. Oh, you've got one. Is that a can goal? Huh? Can go. I have no yeah, idea it what it is. It's called this. It's a driving cap. It's called uh, <laughs> you're an old Jew and you've given up cap. <laughs> is what it looks like. You know, what or you called last night the I moved to Florida but, hat. But, but uh, unfortunately tonight I am not in full gear because really? I'm wearing jeans. Uh, what do you I'm usually not, Well, uh, do you have them on, Phil? Yeah. I Show do. them what the Gabnet Oh. Where is we all have PJs. the same? Yeah, we all have the same <laughs> shorts. Oh, it's so great. Yeah, yeah, and I didn't wear them tonight because we were out to dinner, and yeah. I didn't want to just sit here, you know. In your PJs. In my well, it's PJ not, my, not my PJs. Those aren't PJs. Those are very comfortable, loose fitting, if those, casual. No, those are it's your uh, that's, PJs. The, that's the clothing you wear when you're old enough to give up. Okay. Okay. It's your loungewear. <laughs> Uh, well, yeah. obviously, because of the vest, I, apparently I haven't given up. You haven't given up. No, you're always, uh, I would imagine you sleep like that, no. you know. No, but I do wake up looking this good, I must say. Yeah. Um, well, what the city do you live in? Um, I live in, in San Francisco. Uh, no, what? Hmm? Are you downtown or? Uh, oh, I, I live in Bernal Heights right now, but I own a condo downtown uh, near the ballpark. Which oh, I rent very out. nice. Yeah. 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 Can you see the game from your condo? Uh, I couldn't, but when I was living down there, I would go to 30 games, and I'm not kidding you, 30 games every season Wait. for free. What, what is what, Kendall what, Wayne Park, huh? Uh, uh, <laughs> no, no. James, what have, you, park, what have you got? What, have you, what are you holding? Uh, this is Patches, my Japanese chin right here. Oh. I'm going to say goodbye. I got some chores to do before it gets dark. I got to do some spraying and all that good stuff out there in the Well, jungle. don't spray the dog. Yeah, it's because or the cat or no, whatever no, the hell right. it is. No, no, because no, paradise is, is full of roaches and the rats. The problem is are the, are the red fire ants. You know, they can bite these dogs and blind them. Oh, if no. you count, buddy, we got a full house. Wait a minute. Yeah. Wait a minute. So Hold I'm going to be clearing out. Good seeing you all on the continental U.S. Good to know that everyone is uh, safe and sound. And uh, this is okay. Kilo Oscar 6, Quebec. Tango, gonna go clear. You know that, Vernon. Peace out. Bye bye. Bye bye. Uh, he, sure. that, there, there goes. Uh, uh, we don't uh, want ants killing us. Well, we were, we were one short of a full house, weren't we? Uh, well, if you count Buddy, we had a full house. Well, if we, oh, well, well no, so we count them now. We've got eight people right. plus me, nine. That's yeah. good. So, but we need one more to make it a full house. See, but not, and, not and a, for a oil a, flush. Well, we could I, do more than that. Actually. Well, if I can quote an old friend of Phil's, well, there you go again. Yeah. You know, I was talking to Nancy Pants, and she said, "Well, is, uh, well, is that my name?" And she said, "Well, Ronnie, it is." And I said, "Oh," and uh, I said, "Just say no." And she said, "Why?" And well, you know, if I could just remember what it was I forgot before I remembered to forget it, well, there, there you go again. Yeah. Make that's it, the theme of this show. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> that, speak, that sounds like I'm beginning to sound. Well, you know. Uh, yeah, are, are you wearing one of these hats, too, Patrick? Look Did at you his, just, look yes, the lids. He, he went and got up, too. No, no, but... Uh, yeah, there it is. One person. There it is. We so, have two without lid. Two lid... Three lidless. Okay, well, everybody has... To, oh, wait a minute. Here goes Vernon. Vernon, hey, don't tell me, Vernon, you've got one of these caps. Oh, I mean, is, is this what old Jews wear? Do you have one... I don't have one. A uh, Jeff? No, I don't have one. No. But he'll get one. <laughs> but I'd like one. Yeah. You would like one? We we can well, my Hey Tony, if you're listening, send Jeff yeah. one of these caps. Yeah, yeah Tony to send you one. Yeah, there you go. Are they all Kangol? Doesn't Gabnet have a, mer a merchandise store online? I don't know, but we, we should get. It, we should, it, you're right, Tim. We should probably get them with like the a Gabnet logo on them or something. You know. Yeah, that's where the that's where the money's at. That's where the big money's at. Oh yeah! If I start merchandising here, we'd sell at least five caps. Yeah. <laughs> you know, there we go. God love them. There we go. It's a red lid too. I oh, this that. is disgusting. What's on? You don't have one of these, do you, Tom? Oh, it's just Cardinals. Oh, it's a Cardinals. Oh. Uh, S.I. Hyatt Collar, remember he had uh, one of those caps? Well, St. Louis, near Louisville. S.I. Hyatt Collar. Yeah, I remember S.I. Hyatt Collar. 
was a state That's senator state. and uh, the head of uh, San Francisco State University, right? Right. U.S. senator. And he came to, as time went by, we all came to hate him. But in the early days, he, he, was, he wrote a thing that I loved reading because I was a kid and it was interesting to read, the sexual symbolism in advertising. Uh, uh, well, there you go again. No, there we go again, <laughs> right. So, uh, so maybe not. Yes, yes, Jeff. <laughs> Did you get your cap in Spain? No, I, it, Tony sent me this. this. Is a, it's a can goal. It's, a, you know, K-A-N-G-O-L. Tony the, sent me this. That's a little love. Uh, uh, I, I said, thank you, Tony. Very fashionable. Thank you. I really appreciate it. You've got the... There you go. Of course, what I'm proudest of, what I'm proudest of is my... Uh, is my T-shirt tonight? Can you see it all? Can go with a with yeah. the, the little uh, yeah yeah. Mine doesn't say can go. Yes, on. it does. Mine says, no, mine <laughs> says can't. Oh, it does, doesn't it? Yeah. It is a can go. Yeah, you got the real thing. Yeah. Oh, really? How about yeah, and you know, Tony doesn't sell Kangles. He goes to another place and gets them for us. Oh, really? Oh, okay. Yeah. But anyway, you see my shirt tonight, of course. Very oh, good. Got this in China. <laughs> That commie, that damn commie, see, Obama. Yeah, I gotta tell yeah. you. You know, I wish. I'm think as I think back, if I if I would could, could go back in a time machine and change anything in history, I would go back to the uh, president's, uh, you know, White House correspondence dinner, where Obama put down Trump, and tell him not to. Because I think at that point it was the. It, this is a guy who is so vain that he couldn't take joking at a place where you're supposed to like roast so, people. Yeah, exactly. He he could never fare well at a friar's roast. Oh God! You know, a Dean uh, Martin roast with rickles. Yeah, at the helm. yeah. Look out! Uh, uh, <laughs> he could he can't he couldn't take that. And so that's where he got his hate for Obama. And everything oh. he does, he wakes up in the morning and says, what else can I undo that Obama did? Yeah. He, Whether it's he, good or bad. Uh, eliminating regulations, which Obama put in. And, uh, Phil, uh, Phil. There's nothing can I be, worse than being put down by a black man. Yeah. Uh, the, fact is, is, worse. the fact is, Phil, you got to have regulations. Some. No, a lot. Because you can you play? Is there any sport you can play without rules, Phil? There's no sport that you can play with. Except there's maybe, nothing wrong you know. with rules, but some of the, the amount of regulations are onerous on our businesses, and it makes well, no, it, it what it does is it keeps them in check. Otherwise, yeah. they would go yeah. crazy. Otherwise, we the have uh, the D Great Depression of the '30s or the 2008 meltdown that has still screwed up our country oh i know but and now, uh, and now let's give a tax break to, like to, to uh, 1.7 yeah. trillion dollars to rich people that don't need it and put our kids into further debt what happened to conservative fiscal responsibility that's what i want to know where I mean, are those conservatives the tea party it was screaming and yelling uh you know let's let's get uh, our our debt you know, in order. You know, it went from 15 trillion to 19 trillion uh, in uh, the uh, years of the Obama administration. That's, the debt. that's not true. Uh, <laughs> but it doubled under George W. Bush. It hey, doubled. Hey, Phil, you're supposed, well, you're, supposed to go in, you're supposed to go in debt when you're in a depression or a recession. You're not supposed to go into debt now when we're actually, the economy is recovered. Well, you the don't go in debt now. And that's what they, that's what they're doing. The, the economy hasn't recovered. That's uh, it's recovered. That's, it's not in a deep recession. Yeah. Well, well why, why, why are they that's raising the recovered. interest rates? It's not unemployment. Not doing well, but you all, got I, all, all I know, the hat, all, the all, all that I, would take a job tomorrow. All I know is this fucking asshole has cost me money. Okay. I've I've lost about three thousand bucks in stocks and stuff yeah, like that in the last couple of weeks. Yeah, but how much did you make over the year? What's the end result? It, well, under Obama, I made a lot. Uh, no, but under under uh, Trump, you made a lot. No, so I didn't you, make a lot. I didn't make a lot. I didn't make uh, most of the money that I made. The the massive amount I made was under Obama. All right. I, well, and I no, lost. I no lost. And anything I gained from Trump, I just lost. Yeah. Temporarily. And, and no, temporarily. In the working class is getting more take-home pay either the tax cut was uh, was bogus and fraudulent it's a total bogus tax cut 
Uh, it does not help the middle class at all. Let me see here. We're down well, 100. We were, well, we find. Oh, we. Oh, we up. bounced back today. We bounced back, didn't we? Yeah. We but, didn't bounce back enough. We're no. still down nine dollars. Is down nine points. Well, but, it went down what fourteen hundred, and then it went up six or seven, and uh, down. It's a very unstable market. Yes, Vernon. What I get so frustrated with are these eliminate regulations people who act as though government regulations appear out of thin air. They don't. Government regulations are the result of laws passed by Congress and signed by the president. And they don't appear out of thin too. air. Obama did not create a whole bunch of regulations out of thin air. He was directed to do that by legislation. Yeah, who were influenced by a lobbyist. And no, but they also had... And it's well, been controlled by the Republicans for the last 30 years. years. And, and, excuse me, and the Trump administration isn't being controlled by lobbyists? Well, we'll see. <laughs> what do you mean, we'll see? Uh, I don't see him in, inventing well, regulations. Well, no, he's like, being controlled he, by worse than lobbyists. He's being controlled by Vladimir Putin and deals he wanted to make in Russia and whatever videotapes they got of him being peed on by Russian hookers. Yeah, I'm with you. You've got a president, you've got a president of all the people that he complains mm -hmm. about who probably is the most vulnerable to being uh, blackmailed. blackmailed. Yeah. yeah. You hear about Absolutely. John Bolton, Alex? Did, did, what, what about did you guys watch the Stormy, Stormy Daniels interview? Yes, of course. Of course. Of course we did. Does McDonald's have golden what arches? If, I, I got a what if for you. What if it's Putin's people that made the physical threat to Stormy saying it was really Trump, and that's what he's been holding, holding over his head. Because he won't talk about Stormy or Putin. No. Well, there's he money won't. at stake. What, wait, wait, pa Patrick went, oh, were you agreeing with that, uh, Patrick? No, uh, just, I, I always enjoy Tim conspiracies. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, no, I'm yeah. not saying it happened. I knew you were doing that, Patrick. To... They, I have to give him <laughs> well, credit, though. Doing. This isn't like that that's late night, that late night radio though. show. That's he's not talking do. about aliens, you know. Yet. We're talking about the, what Putin normally does in these situations. He does things that it's out of your control and then uses it against you. Well, let's put it this way. They couldn't say to Stormy Daniels, look, leave the president alone or we have pictures of you we're going to use. <laughs> or <Right>. maybe do. <laughs> yes, Patrick. You don't want to fucking look at her picture. Well, I'll go yeah. with, with uh, the, this conspiracy yep. theory. I'll tell you, I said this last night. I think the story that's the big, the, to me, the most important story is this playmate and her story. Because How her relationship most, went on for nine months. She right. claims. She claims her relationship. Oh, yeah, went well, on. Oh, he, she claims. She claims. I believe her. Yeah. Okay. And not because I want to, but because her story, and mo most people who saw the interview and then commented on it afterwards said, it seemed like she wasn't lying because it was consistent. Yes, Patrick. Uh, she, she was consistent, but it, it could have been embellished. Well, that's the thing. Is I didn't see her interview, but I read about it, and I saw a snippet. She seemed more sincere. Yes. Uh, and the fact that she had a very human quality mm -hmm. of feeling guilty about the relationship then mm -hmm. uh, added to me more weight to her claims certainly and more sympathetic character yeah yeah and yeah. but there was also the difference between the two is that the value of stormy daniels story is the hundred and thirty thousand dollar payoff which can be directly linked to a lawyer employed by trump okay and that then Asked the question, a whole bunch of questions about uh, an, campaign, uh, finance. campaign financing and so on and so forth. Whereas the Karen Doherty story is basically no. a love story that went on for a rather long time, or nine months but at her least. her story was, was bought out by National Enquirer, no. right? Yes, AMR. and we don't have a direct link from the National Enquirer to Trump, where we do with the Stormy Daniels story. Yeah, the Stormy Daniels thing seems more like a pissing match between lawyers. Than anything else. Yes, but I think that but, they're they're but, they're constantly they're getting into it more than they, 
They're, but we watched they're. we watched the Karen Doherty because I had already seen it, so I found it on <clears> YouTube, <throat> YouTube for girlfriend to watch. And after it was over, we said of the two interviews, that's the one in which it was somebody who really had an affair going on with him. And yeah, you can pull that up on demand of CNN, and, and it's a pretty good interview. Yeah, yeah. Do, uh, do, you, do you see where where Trump's been hiding from the press for three or four or five days now because he's afraid to have questions about Stormy or Karen McDougal. Yeah. But you know what the real reason is. He's running. Yes, uh, Melania has hired Melania hired a new consultant, <laughs> Lorena Bobbitt. <laughs> okay, uh, uh, to Patrick. <laughs> Patrick has his Patrick has his hand up. Cut um, the edge, baby. That was pretty funny, Jim. So I'll give you that one. Um, <laughs> okay. The other thing with Stormy Daniels is she's going to be appearing here in Wisconsin at two uh, rather well-known strip clubs uh, next month. So, I mean, you know, his, so to me, there's a gal that's just looking for a payout, and she fucked him on her own. She didn't really give a shit, and then she played the victim card, even though she said, I don't want to be known as a victim, did the whole uh, $130,000 thing. You know what? I, I don't really give a shit what happened to her. I'm more concerned with the Karen McDougal thing, because mm -hmm. that is sincere and i know you don't like how phil was calling uh stormy a hooker mm -hmm. but you know what she's a fucking yeah. hooker she's a porn star a hooker she's over that shit because you know what like i said next month in a few days she's going to be swinging on a pole with in madison and in milwaukee and making yeah. a yeah. box alex you Patrick. know the old joke, Patrick. Uh, you know, would you would you screw me for uh, for a dollar? No, that that, that joke no. doesn't apply here, Phil. Patrick, you're gonna go down and see her. That's at that price. No, I I. Ah, oh, come on. I would go see Karen McDougal. Yeah. Somebody. I would yeah, but maybe she'll maybe she'll well, snuggle up the, to you down here, there. Here's the thing. She'll, uh, Karen will make a special. First appearance. of all, let me let me define Stormy <laughs> Daniels for you. Uh, a a porn actress. Uh, provided that all she does is what's that, Phil? That that's Kevin's throne. That's Kevin's throne. My yeah. Throne. Oh, when uh, he went to see him. Well, yeah. December. Oh, yeah. I, I, yeah. I, I, oh, 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 I see. Was it, there. He didn't wait it, for me. It, 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 now we're talking about something else, and all of a sudden <laughs> yeah. you throw that. Picture there he goes. Right left turn. Yeah, <laughs> right into the ditch, taking oh. the show, careening right into the proverbial right ditch. Ditch. Anyway. Um, uh, Starry Daniels was a porn actress. Porn actresses have sex for money with other people who are having sex for money. That, you know, it is, it, she did not have sex for money uh, that we know of, uh, just with the average human being who wanted to pay her for sex. So that does not, she is not a prostitute. So where did she come up with the price of 130000 to make her happy? Uh, I think 130000 was negotiated by her lawyer at the time. Yeah. Uh, and she had nothing to do with coming up with that amount, and that but is not the. the it's still, it's still not the Google act of a prostitute. They were. They wanted her not to tell her story, and so they were willing to pay for her not to tell her story. That's not being a prostitute. That's allowing yourself to be bribed, but that's not being a prostitute. Yes. And she did not initiate it. Yes, she did not. The thing initiate is, she it. was. Not. She was she was very matter-of-fact with her answers. And it was, was initiated wait, 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 16 wait, wait. days before the election. Let Kevin talk. Kevin. She was very matter-of-fact with, uh, she went to the bathroom, she came out, he was sitting there buck naked. He, she said, well, I guess I'm in it. Okay, let's go screw. It was very matter-of-fact, I'm in it, I'm, I'm, I'm here, this is it, okay. And that's screwing. what she, and that's kind of what she's used to doing on a movie set. Yeah. Exactly. You know, exactly. I've got so, you got the star. Well, I'm here to do the yep. movie. Okay, let's yep. fuck. I'm gonna do it. I did it consensually. Okay, it's over. Now you go outside. Yeah. And yeah the, all this the other part shit you happens. have to like about her, Phil, is she didn't at any point in that interview play herself as the victim. Right. No, neither of them did. No, the other one kind of did because she was she was in love with him and he was playing yeah. her for that. Well, she said that she was there consensually. Oh no, yeah. she said she was there consensually, but she was not, but. But she kind of seems like a victim, whereas a Stormy fact. Daniels made it very clear, I'm not a victim. I made the decision to fuck him. She's a pro. And then he said, uh, you know well, would you, did you find him attractive? And she said, not in the least. Right. Do you, know, you know what the biggest question here is, though? 
What? Is is this activity going to nullify the prenup between Melania and Donald? We don't I think that's what Donald's afraid would. of. I think it would. Well, to begin with, I know exactly. I know exactly what Stormy's lawyer is doing. He knows yeah. the history of Donald Trump. Donald Trump always threatens to sue for twenty million dollars or whatever, and then he never does it. Never. So what they're figuring is he's not going to do it. She can write a book. She can go on every TV show known to mankind. And she's really not going to have to pay the price for breaking that so-called confidentiality agreement. Yes, Tom. What I heard today was actually their goal is to get Trump to be deposed in federal court. Yeah. And I think right. settle. I thought she wanted to settle. No. Hey, did anybody see the mashup on, uh, I think it was MSNBC, of all the quotes that Trump used over the last couple of years? teasing on all the stories, all the, the way he plays the PR. Avenatti is using almost some of the exact same phrases. We'll see in little things, one thing at a time. He's using uh, Trump's techniques against him. Avenatti's a, almost verbatim. Avenatti's a, a very good lawyer. And he's he, an actor. He, he's a good he, actor. He's, yeah. a very, he's very good at using television as part of his practice. You know, and uh, I mean, the other night when he was on with uh, 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 Cohen's attorney, because Cohen won't come forward, but no. his attorney will come forward. There's an attorney who has an attorney. Right. Right. And he was <laughs> laughing at everything the guy and, was and saying. And he said, why don't you have your guy come on because he's nothing but a, I think he called him a bully. And mm -hmm. uh, the other lawyer for Cohn. Uh, said, uh, that's uh, libelous, and we could sue you for a million dollars. And then he said, <laughs> and Avenatti came back and went, okay, if that's the case, he's a bully, 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 he's a bully. He kept going <laughs> on like that. He said, figure out how much that's worth. Yeah. You know, <laughs> this, this thing of Trump always threatening to sue is something that they, you he's know, I think Avenatti yeah. knows he's not going to sue and she's not going to owe $200 million, you know, $20 million. $20 million. But uh, uh, they, what he'd really like to do, and I think Avenatti has a deal with Stormy Daniels, just let me do what I got to do because I want to I flush this guy out. And what he wants to do is he wants to get him into a deposition. And, mm -hmm. I, and he can do it because there's already been a precedent for a president having to give a deposition. His name was Bill Clinton. The president says he didn't do anything, that there was no and, effect. And so if, did... If Trump's lawyers moving at the federal court is going to kill it because... He's trying a to. physical threat, that takes it outside the NDA. And outside the NDA, they have to have a jury. I don't think there was over a... The, over the physical threat. I don't think so there you was, can't stay in front of a negotiator. That's not a matter of uh, opinion, Phil. That's she to can't, be investigated. She that's to be investigated. Then let her prove it. She never made a police report. But that's uh, what they're doing. They're going to try to prove it, and you have to have a jury, so you can't stick it with an arbitrator. Yeah, but when there's they, untoward you can't pose somebody that says uh, that you know he didn't have anything to do with it. Yeah, you, you can. Know? Why? If you have what's, enough what's credible evidence. Cause? Where's your probable cause to arrest the guy? Who is D.D.? D.D.? That's the size of her tits. Well, yeah. they've, they've, they've <laughs> well, got to get all the, all the written good. evidence that they have in, in on file. Yeah. They've by the way, asked for all the written by, evidence. By the way, he was the guy joined, who didn't sign the contract. It, no, by the way, if, if anybody's just tuning in, the guy sitting next to me is Buddy Love. Hello, yeah. Buddy yeah. Love. And uh, uh, Patrick has his hand up. Yeah, it, the only thing that I will give um, Stormy Daniels a little bit of a uh, leeway on is not filing a police report because there are plenty of women who get harassed or raped or abused, as we know, over the last, since what, fucking September we've heard about this, that, you know, they, for whatever reason, they don't do it. And it can be a good reason or a bad reason, it doesn't matter. But um, if it did happen, I suppose we'll find out one way or the other. She's a tough gal. She's a pro. She's got attorneys. You mean to say that she was going to take that threat laying down? She wasn't a billionaire, though. She uh, at billionaire. that time, she didn't have the legal uh, representation she yeah. has now. I'm going to raise my hand. It's, yes. It's, here's here's the thing. Her original attorney was the same as okay. Karen McDougal's, wasn't it? That yeah. negotiated yes. the contract. Yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah. Let me, let me, we think there's collusions okay, uh, between uh, okay. Michael Cohen and the attorneys. Uh, 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 I, I have something to say here. I do a joke about Vinny, Vinny and Guido. You know, oh, nice place you got here. Be ashamed if it should burn down. I mean, this is <laughs> shtick. But let me tell you, in real life, I've known people up in Reno, Nevada, mm -hmm. a guy who ended up in the can for pimping and pandering. And he came to me in all seriousness. And this guy scared the shit out of me. He said, listen, you know, if anybody gives you any kind of problems, I want you to come to me because I can fix it because I know people and I got money. I swear to God, I've, I've used that mm -hmm. line. And this guy was absolutely dead serious. There are people out there that are very intimidating and whether or not this is true or not, if it did happen and you've got a little daughter sitting next to you, you got to think twice about fucking with these people and going to the oh, police. Yeah. Think oh, about yeah. it. Think about going to the police after somebody has threatened your life in front of your daughter. And I don't know about you, but I'd be going, hmm. well, hmm. Phil would be you brave know, enough. You know, Phil, you know, Phil, Phil would be brave. Wait a minute. Phil would be brave enough. Uh, Not, uh, wait a minute. Uh, Phil would be brave enough. Uh, to go to the police. He's also, if he was in Parkland, he would run into that building and shoot the kid. So Yeah, in, in a minute. But you know something? Without I a gun. And I'll tell you why. Uh, my father was a tough guy. And uh, he used to work for a guy named Albert Anastasia in, in Brooklyn. And Albert Anastasia was you know, Murder Incorporated. He was, he, was a, he was a murderer. Didn't he get killed and, in the barber shop? Yes, he did. Yes, he did. And he gave me my first bicycle. That was a close shave. Ha, <laughs> yeah, uh, you know, he's, you know, he had, he had a church in his basement. He, he was, uh, you know, he, my father was installing carpet in his house yeah. and he was, took a was he killed with Occam's razor. Yeah, really? Uh, well, the easiest thing, but, uh, what happened was, uh, my father said, you know, that the guy asked for a shirt and he said, I just took it off and gave it to him. And a couple weeks later, he was installing custom carpet made in the same color, and he had it pressed and uh, gave him a Helbros watch along with it, which I still have. But the thing is, he said, this guy's a killer. You, you don't say no. And uh, so I understand what Buddy is saying. You know, knowing, uh, you know, my father, he stood up to everybody, you know, but you didn't stand up to well, uh, Albert Anastasia. Do, do, do you think Stormy know anything about Trump's uh, Russian connections? Because there was a Russian that was supposed to testify in Washington D.C. I don't. That I, was I, I, the night before I, I, he went. I, now, you, now, you go, now you're going. Now you're going way off base, Tim. No. Well, no, no, I know, I know. That's but if she knows he's it's, hanging it's, out with the mafia. Or here, here's 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 what I would like. Here's what I would like to throw in here. And of course, Phil, yeah. this will drive Phil crazy. But you know, we do know that Trump, because of his dealings in New York City, was mobbed up. His hanging out with Roy Cohn, who was the mob's attorney, right. and considering Roy Cohn his mentor, uh, means that Trump was mobbed up. You don't think maybe he doesn't make a call and say, threaten Stormy Daniels? You know, I saw a picture of Roy Cohn on TV today. Not my Cohn, but Roy Cohn. And I looked at his eyes, and all I could re think about was what you said. Of the story when of my, when I, when I did, had a debate with him on the Barry Farber show, and I looked into those eyes, and there was no life behind them. It was like shark eyes, you know. Yeah. What year That's, was this? This was, oh, God, this had to be 70s? in the 70s. Yeah. 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 Before he got it's AIDS. It's almost like oh, yeah. he didn't have a soul. You know, mm -hmm. He had no soul. I, I looked at him and I said, he was, how do you feel about the fact that you sent the Rosenbergs to the electric chair, which he was involved in? And he mm -hmm. said, every day I feel very good about it. And he said it with those eyes looking right at me. Yeah. He was an and evil, I just went, oh, person. fuck, man. I've just met the fucking devil. You know? right. well, and and this was picture. Donald Trump's mentor. mentor. It's true. Yeah. I saw that picture and it made me think about what you'd said. Yeah. And... Uh, yeah, he was evil personified. Yeah, you know. I'm scared now, and I'm not even a woman. <laughs> they and they did a Broadway show, a like a that. Angels. <clears throat> uh, what the, the the AIDS movie? Angels. Uh, Angels uh, in America. Uh, yeah. Angels in America. Yeah. Roy, he, Roy he's Roy one Roy. of the characters in that play. He was an evil, evil man. Evil man. Uh, 
But, you know, all I'm saying is is that the, the Stormy Daniels thing in and of itself would be just uh, unimportant, he said, she said kind of thing, except for the fact that there was a $30,000 payment made, $130,000 payment made. And they, you know, somebody's got to account for that and whether that constituted a was donation. That for, was that for a lap dance and some pole dancing? No. You know, no, they, no, that's, no. Hey, Alex. It was for keeping her mouth shut, not keeping it open. Okay. <laughs> Yeah. Hey, Alex, this is Tim. Yeah. The most important sentence in her interview on 60 Minutes was when she said she would recognize the guy that physically threatened her. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, she Ver would, if Ver she saw him somewhere. So the question is, would she ever be identify him somehow? Well, Vernon Nunn, you're, you're on tap now. This is a similar thing I was mentioning a while ago about John Bolton. Apparently... The Robert Mercer and his family, who fund who fund the Cambridge Analytica data, yeah. which the Trump campaign used, the Mercer family has been doing this in other things like Brexit and like the John Bolton Political Action Committee, which got Tom Tillis elected in North Carolina, and they're now opening an investigation as to whether all of these things are separate examples of contributions in kind to campaigns that are not reported. Because they don't charge very much. They He pumps a lot exactly. of money into Cambridge. Yeah, Mercer funds the whole little, thing, and then they don't charge. Wait a minute. There was some guy's wife that uh, was working in the, uh, uh, was it for Hillary or uh, uh, one of those things, uh, also in the, one of the Carolinas, that uh, got elected, uh, and they said it was a quid pro quo uh, deal for um uh, a campaign donation and something to uh, pay her off uh, for something that was going on with the Hillary emails. Uh, is anybody you, 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 you're talking about McCabe? You're yes. About McCabe? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah, and they should go after that. If there was something wrong, you know, they should go after him. But this, we got more important things right now. <laughs> but uh, well, you know, it's it, more it, important. I mean, you know, why is one more important than the other? Unless you just, you know, because it's because Trump's in the White House and Hillary isn't. And Trump, That's why. Trump's destroying our, our credibility around the world. Well, I think, I, think with, I think the worst thing that Trump is doing, if you want my opinion, is he has made a mockery out of the, president, out of the presidential office, that he has, has diminished its uh, importance. He's had no respect for it, has no respect for the presidency. And I, what kind of a message does this pass along? Not only, I hate to use the kids of America because I, everybody hides behind that kind of excuse. But, you know, what, what kind of message does that send across to uh, young Americans growing up right now? And the kind of behavior you engage in if you're president of the United States, you know? So, uh, I so see. have no pride left. I see positive things. I mean, how I do you, Tom, Tom, uh, let's, get, let's get Tom involved. Kim Tom, Jump. are you there? Or is he, he hasn't talked yeah, yeah. to that. He hasn't talked to He, he, he will Kim. be. There. Yeah, hold on a second. I, I want to get Tom's opinion on this. I mean, don't you feel that there's a real diminishing of, of, of respect for what that office is by Trump? Oh, absolutely. I, I, I mean, it's, it's amazing. You know, he, he, we are a laughing stock now ever, ever since he, he's gotten into the White House. He and everything we learn just just continues to confirm what we know, and that is he doesn't he doesn't read, he doesn't listen, he doesn't care to learn. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I mean, these two things, uh, and and he's he's incompetent and corrupt, and so now and we we have gathered more evidence to find out how how incompetent, how corrupt he is. We've pretty much gotten uh, the answer to the first. He's extremely incompetent. Now we're working on the second part, how corrupt. Yeah. How do you feel, Phil, about his mob affiliations? Look, uh, I grew up in New York City. Uh, my dad had the Port of New York as a customer. We put the original carpet in the World Trade Center. Uh, uh, everything was mobbed up in the 70s. That's just the way it was. The early 70s. Well, the late I 60s. look. I I will go along I, with your you with your wait, wait a minute. I will go along with your assertion that in order to get anything built in New York City, you had to deal with the mob. That right. And, it, and these it, are guys. It, minute, shot well, let, okay. No. No. I know that that you have to deal with the mob. But 
The fact is, we have a president who dealt with the mob, okay, and knows mobsters and knows who to go to if he needs to go to them. He, it, you know, not the kind of savory human being that we want as our president. If he was that mobbed up, he wouldn't have been able to get a casino license in New Jersey. You know, but they, then they, he, but then he turned to the Russian mob. That was his big mistake. Yeah, exactly. Thank you. The, the, the Russian mob has something on him. And Putin, by the way, is a huge part of the Russian mafia. It's interesting. We kick out how many people out of Seattle, uh, Ru uh, Russians? 60 total. 60? I thought 60 total. Yeah, yeah. 60 total. Nothing Which, we did is, wait, wait a minute. Let me finish. Tim, Putin. let me finish what I'm saying. We, I'm sorry. we throw out uh, uh, 60 people. It's a big deal. We've, we've made a sanction against the Russians. And yet he doesn't say anything about it. He doesn't tweet about it. He doesn't say, look at what we just did. He's silent. He's mum. He, the only thing he does, uh, he's ever had to say about Putin was the fact that he called him to say how, how wonderful it was that he won. Congratulations, you won. Congratulations. You know? Well, if he's, if he's talking to one of the superpowers in the world and could eventually make peace, as well as uh, the potential Bench, to negotiate with yeah. Kim Jong Un yeah. and and reduce the nuclear threat on the Korean Peninsula. He's also you're dealing you're dealing with a dream here, Phil, because these are two people, both Kim Jong Un, who is not stupid like you'd like to think, and uh, and he, by the way, he just went to China to hang out with the Chinese and talk to them about stuff, uh, and and Putin. Putin is just yes. Donald, nice of you to act that way. That's wonderful. He knows Putin's his bitch. I mean, uh, the Trump is his bitch. That's what they say. You, you keep your friends close and you keep your enemies closer. Yes, unless they want you to be their bitch. Yeah, but this still man <laughs> be president. Then you don't get too close if they want you to be their bitch. He's, he's uh, started uh, negotiating better deals with the Chinese. Uh, he's protecting our intellectual... What, what, better deal, what be a better deal did he make with the Chinese? I didn't he hear about it. He started a trade war. <laughs> He started, he started a trade war. He didn't make a better deal. There's no trade war because they there's no way the Chinese are going to recruit. They're, they're not going to ask for their money back. They're not going to stop buying our bonds because they need American dollars. Yeah, but, they, but, but anyway, we should stop giving them our bonds because if they ever want to call them in, uh, they own the United call. States of America. They'll never call them in, and they need to exchange the yuan for dollars, and that's the only way they can do it. Yeah. I think things are starting to turn, Alex. Yeah. Because I tweet uh, under Green Space Guy, and I usually get about a hundred to hundred and fifty thousand hits a month. This wow. month in March, I'm over four hundred thousand hits on mostly news articles and anti-Trump tweets. So people are picking up interest, and there's more people. I think that you know I've doubled the number of hits I'm getting on my tweets. So I think people are really starting to get upset and mad. Yeah, but what a hit is, they looked at your page. It doesn't mean they read it. No, I know. I know. But the likes and retweets are up, too. But And, and, it, and it could have been Republicans looking to threaten you. Yeah. <laughs> but, you know, uh, all I'm well, saying... Well, I know. I get trolled, too. Yeah, that's true. All I'm saying is, do I believe Stormy Daniels? Yeah, the, uh, she didn't have much of a story to tell, really. No. You know? there. Uh, uh, do, do I believe Karen McDougal? Absolutely. Absolutely. But her story isn't as actionable as Stormy Daniels' story. Stormy, well, Dan Stormy Daniels just fucked him because he, okay, I'll just get this over with and goodbye. You know, and I'll say I fucked Donald Trump. You yeah. know. My president's a hound dog. Huh? Well, My president's a hound you, dog. Your president's a stupid hound dog because the last thing you want to do is have yeah. sex with a porn actress who makes her living off of publicity. Yeah. Okay. Well, he was making his living at the time off of publicity. Yeah. You know, so this this uh, wasn't a story though. Yeah, until but, after he was president, and you didn't want to get publicity at that time for fucking a porn star. You know, it'd be great if you were single and they said, "Hey, Donald Trump fucked Stormy Daniels." Wow, that's hot. You know, but no, he was married. His wife just had their baby. It was two months after the baby was born. Yes, so he's Patrick. a prick too. He's a prick. You finally said it, Phil. Phil, yeah, but Phil said that. he's a prick. <laughs> you know what else it? You know what else it does, Phil? What's that? It's making the Steele dossier look like it might be true. I uh, doubt it. Because it's it's 
if they if there's six to eight other people that come out, and he's just this weird pervert. That I, I, I think what I have to do, I, what I have to do, what I have to do, I, I have to do with you, Tim, is limit you to one conspiracy theory a show. <laughs> well, I, well, I know, but I'm just, I'm just, I'm just repeating this. stuff I've heard. Tim might know this, People but I, I, saying. I saw something today that there was some DO, DOJ fired some more FBI guys and so forth be over mm -hmm. uh, this uh, fake news stuff and uh, uh, that investigation. Did you hear anything about that? It was just a, a glancing story. I didn't catch that one. Uh, let me. Uh, let me. I did see where the if I, the Mullerman's case is going forward, though. Let me. Let me ask uh, uh, um, uh, Buddy Love here a question. You see all the people here. Yes. You've heard them tonight. Yep. We know which one is a Republican, right? Oh yeah. Yeah. Which one's the other? Which other one's a Republican? I'm gonna. I'm gonna go with the bearded fellow. Nope. No. Who? Patrick. Patrick. Yeah. You're a Republican. Yeah. But he he's not the same kind of Republican no, no, as this, Phil. No, and, and listen, I have, as you well can imagine, a lot of Republican friends. I also have some very heavyweight people that work in Washington, um, some of whom you know, some of them you don't. They all say the same thing, that Donald Trump and the group that helped getting him, get him elected will all go down for money laundering. That's what they're going to get them on. And well, then then to, for Trump, now that it's 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 moving in this direction, it'll be obstruction of justice to show how much money laundering has happened within his corporate uh, structure. Um, there was a, a piece done, um, I think, on CNN about his dealings in Panama with uh, this one hotel, not not a hotel, a condominium complex, where the Chinese were buying, you know, all these units and never mm -hmm. occupying them and just hiding their money, and it was going through Russia to to to. Uh, there, there is there is a lot of Russian money involved with Trump. Yeah, we yeah. know that, uh, and and it's a question of how much that money influences his decisions as president. Yes, you know, it, Phil. You it's know also it's illegal in real estate to sell to somebody you know is using it for money laundering purposes. Yeah. That's, uh, a, yes. that's a it, big felony. Phil has you, his hand up. At, at the Trump Hotel in Washington, D.C., they leave two emoluments on the pillows at night. Nah, no, no laugh. No, huh? no, <laughs> but, uh, no. How do you know that, Phil? It's a joke. Yeah, emolument, you know. Emolument. Are they, are they living and breathing, or are they dead bodies? Like a dead no, 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 no. <laughs> little chocolate mints. Little chocolate right. emoluments. Emoluments. Yeah. 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 Somebody yeah. finally got. Dead Gee, how do we yeah. how do we, how do we follow <laughs> that joke? <laughs> I've got a good one. <laughs> you know. Yeah. All right. I mean, uh, it, it. I. I just. I'm. I'm speechless. I can't come up with anything that funny, Phil. Well, that's what I figured. But yeah, uh, yeah. I thought a mall and much was something you bought from Avon. Boy, I'll be glad when they pull that face. thing out of your dick, <laughs> and, we, and, and, and we can it put the stick, it. and we can put the stick back up your ass. Oh, you I, know. Ouch. it's never gone away. It's never gone away. <laughs> Well, it's the only wood you're going to have. Anyway, uh, uh, <laughs> there you go. See, you came back, Patrick. Bottom. Bottom. Yeah. In, in honor of Phil getting it out of his dick, I'm going to go put one in shortly. Yeah. But I've never had a stick in my ass, so. Yeah, that's good. Well, that's, uh, you know, that's fine. Well, I'll start the theme here. Yeah. You it's know? a pleasure being with you guys hey, listen, tonight. Hey, uh, uh, it's been good having you here, oh, buddy. Love, ladies and gentlemen. A, good to see you, buddy. A gentlemen. live guest in our, in our studio tonight. It was good. Very nice. Great. You should Great do this fun. more often. Yeah. yeah. Well, he has to fly to New York to do it. Yeah, yeah. I could get. But on. you can get on Skype and join it some night. Sure. If I can only get Will out of the upstairs where my computer and good microphone. I do have to get one of these killer cameras, though. Yeah. Well, those are just normal. They're Logitech eighty ninety cameras. dollars tops. Yeah. Well, I've got a good microphone. These are these are one hundred and twenty. The yeah. one the okay, good yeah, one. The well, good one I use. Yeah, the HD. Yeah. Maybe that's what it was. I, don't I went and bought a real cheap one for the other room, and don't buy a cheap one. 
They were terrible. Oh, and I couldn't yeah. find the box for the mini today. Oh, mine was getting it with forty no... bucks on Amazon. Okay, well you have going to put a box around it or something. Yeah. Phil and Tom, yeah. Yeah. you're yeah. in the Toilet. Bay Area. Come see the Buddy Love uh, Show. Hey, Phil Meyer, thank you. No, I promise I will come. When you come back, I will come. Where are you going to be playing? Uh, we're down at Angelica's in Redwood City on um, May the 11th with the trio and big band. We do both. And it's a wonderful place to come, have dinner, and see a show. Okay. Thanks to Phil. Thank right. you, thank Jeff you. Stein. Thank you, Patrick Blazik. A big thank you to Kevin, Yo, as Kevin. always. Tommy Yamaguchi, uh, you're always welcomed when you're here. Vernon Nunn, yeah, Vernon. becoming quite a regular, and we uh, we appreciate it because you really, a e e as time goes on, you've added more and more to the show, and you're really great. Thank you. And Tim, as usual, thank you. And we're going to limit you to one conspiracy theory per show. Uh, but uh, anyway, the rest of you, please, please, <laughs> no, it won't happen. Uh, g g uh, give a big uh, wave goodbye to everybody so they can see that you're, you're, you love them. Thank you. Okay, bye bye. Anyway, that's our uh, that's our uh, panel for tonight. Boy, they were good. It was a good fantastic. show. Fantastic. This was fun, Alex. You, you had a good time? I had a blast. Great. I'm glad you had a good I really time. Did. I say I stuck in for the two hours. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, let me see here. Let me get some other stuff up here so that I uh, uh, can be ready to go here. Uh, I want to say uh, uh, thank you to Buddy Love for having having joined us. And Pleasure. please come back again. Uh, Whenever I'm whenever in New York, you chance. can count on it. And uh, up next, uh, Jack and Amy with the intersection followed at 1 o'clock in the morning, Eastern Daylight Time by uh, Connections. Tomorrow night at 9.30, it's Damien Chaplin and The Exchange. And then I will be back again tomorrow night at 10 o'clock, same time, same station in life. In the meantime, if you see her, tell her I love her, okay? Bye. Bye.